We started having uh, comms with Daniel Anderson. He used to ring us up and we used to have these conversations with him and he was quite a unique character. And you're thinking about uh, the new way of playing rugby league. He was very innovative in what he would do and he came with um, a, a new breath uh, of life, if you like, for rugby league. What was he able to do for you? Because, I mean, that started to be the period where you spend more time on the field. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that the first thing that, that changed for me um, was he gave me concession to, to get my body prepared for the game on the weekend, irrespective of what everyone else was doing. So I didn't have to be as fit as everyone else. I didn't have to prove that I was um, doing anything uh, better than anyone. It was more about get yourself right, and then um, if you if you can train a couple of days before the game and, and you're looking good, then then I'll select you. So so um, you know I guess. At that stage, I kind of went, okay, uh, my, my body's been banged up. I'm not going to run as much as the guys. And I remember, you know, you and every every other teammate giving me shit because I, I wouldn't be out there training with you guys, and then you called me Koro. Um But but that was it, you know. So so I do a lot of um, swimming. I do a lot of bike um, work on the bike, and then I I got as strong as I could, you know, which I think um, also helped. I'm so strong in the gym. And then, yeah, um, remember when he first turned up and, and he probably didn't know who half of us were. Um, and the first day we, we only had three or four footy balls and everything else has been, been taken because when the club went under, um, we probably had one day uh, to go in and get our stuff. So the boys were stealing all the bikes and all the weights and stuff. <laughs> we're like, man, if we're going to forfeit two months worth of pay, we're going to take everything this we can. Man. Our, <laughs> this job, I'm going to like you, he had just signed a massive contract. It was huge. It was a Simon Burgess at the time, and he was he was pretty happy. But yeah. then taken away from. Yeah, him. it's all it's all ripped up, man. So yeah, the boys had stripped the gym, and nothing was there, and the credit uh, the, the creditors had come in and taken everything. So yeah, we had a bag of footy balls, and I remember Ando just getting us there and, and passing to a target. You know, that was kind of how he was evaluating our skill set. And, and we stripped everything right back to basics. You know, every every yeah. every session we'd go down, we'd just be passing the ball between each other, um, play the balls and all that sort of stuff. So it was really um, re-rooting us from the foundations, and I think that, that really helped. 2001 to 2003, uh, why do you think uh, we were so successful in that era? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of ways you can look at it. Um, we mentioned that the salaries had sort of been reduced and, and a new club, well, so new owners come in and Eric Watson and, and Ridgie um, sort of there brokering some of the deals and, and because um, yeah they, they may not have known uh, the abilities of some of the players um, there was real low baseline um, contracts that most most of us signed um, to, to stay in a club and then it was all match payments you know so every time we'd win the boys would be in the changing room sort of go Ciao! Bonus, go bonus. the go the match pay and bonuses, you know. So it was really interesting to to um, see something that that hadn't been there prior and probably won't be there for a long time now. Is the motivation was not only to be to be selected in the team, but it was also to get a result because it, it put food on your table, you know. So that was that was part of it. But then stripping everything back to to the basics and, and sort of having a, a bit of humbling between all the players um, that we really had to unite together to to get a result. But it was a real skills-based um, platform that we had, and then also Daniel was really smart in terms of identifying what the what the opposition would do each week. Now, when normally when you hear the the, the word sandpit, you think it's fun. <laughs> uh, it wasn't quite fun. If I say sandpit, what sort of uh, memories does that evoke or bring back to you? Oh, uh, yeah, it was confrontation and combat. Um, so that, that was part of it as well. You know, um, we trained as hard as we played at that during that period and, and, and we'd lose a few players um, through training injuries um, but even opposed sessions used to get heated because yeah. everyone was um, driven and, and it wasn't in a, in a way that it was malicious it was just that um, you didn't want to get, let your teammate down um, so in the sandpit yeah, if you missed X number of tackles on the weekend you'd have the biggest um, Fika Palacinas running at you as hard and fast as they could and you'd have to make the tackles otherwise you have to do it again right? otherwise you have to do it again Yeah. Uh, there was a couple of match bonuses that got thrown in obviously that was part of our Contracts and that was part of the salary cap. Even though we were probably on such low um, contracts that there was still room in the salary cap. But then there was also Eric Watson, right? Yeah. Was, <laughs> he used to just five thousand dollars in the kitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, well, it was our, our sort of team fund, um, if you like it. And and um, yeah, after our first win, he was like, "All right, 
five thousand dollars in your team fund, yeah. and, and we had two or end three wins in end, end of year trip, two or three wins, and then um, Nikki Watson, I think, mentioned it to some some of the press, and and that got back to the the um, NRL who said, well, hang on, that's going to push your salary cap up, so you can't do that. So sort of come in after, I don't know, whatever game it was, we might have had two or three um, win bonuses or match match bonuses to the kitty, and said, all right, guys, I can't do this anymore, but you can keep that, and if you make the finals, I'll give you another 100 grand to, to yeah. do your team trip. Oh, those good days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we did that, and um, Anset went under, we were going to go to Bali, then 9-11 happened, so we were all a bit freaked out to travel, so we had $115,000 <laughs> to spend, and we went up up to the Bay of Islands. I took some of that money went to Fiji <laughs> after because I was, had my leg broken. <laughs>